Hello everyone, welcome to session one of Newcomer Orientation and Settlement in English. My name is Doha Heno. I am the publicist slash part, uh, public relations coordinator at Parsai Immigration Services and the Global School of Corporate Excellence. I will be leading you through the English sessions and um, thank you for joining me today. So, uh, I'm assuming that you're looking to settle as a newcomer and need a little bit of help. And you've come to the right place. Um, my name, again, is Doha Heno. My boss, Al Parsai, is a regulated immigration consultant. And our company not only cares about helping people come to Canada, but also helping them settle as well. If you, if you need um, any information about moving, living, studying, or working in Canada, please click on the link on the screen and fill out the assessment or visit settler.ca for anybody watching this on Facebook and fill out the assessment form and someone will get back to you with all of the information you need. This is for newcomer settlement and orientation, but if you would like advice on any immigration services, I definitely recommend you visit www.settler.ca um, and fill out the assessment form. Um, so... Let's get started. The topics that we're going to be covering today are um, choosing a city or town, finding a place to live in your city or town, getting around, so transportation services, um, finding health services, and human rights protection. So, um, welcome to Canada. Why is Canada one of the major destinations for newcomers? Well, let's first discuss a few interesting facts about the history of immigration in Canada and why it attracts so many people. So, there's no singular view on immigration in Canada. Um, however, Canada has needed immigrants since the late 19th century. There was a need for workers to build the Canadian Pacific Railway so uh, they, and farmers to create um, crops and infrastructure, so they would bring Chinese migrants to build the railway and they were also advertising in Europe. Canadians were advertising in Europe to find um, uh, European farmers to basically help grow food and stuff like that. So Canada has always needed um, immigrants to help basically develop the country and it's, it can all be linked all the way back to the 19th century. Today there are still a great need for immigrants. Um, in Alberta, they basically need a lot of immigrants to staff the oil sands projects as well as other projects. Um, so there is still a great need for um, immigrants all over Canada. In fact, Alberta recently sent out a nationwide call for many different skills and trades workers, and it's one of the richest provinces in terms of natural resources. So it's a really great place for people to work and build their um, career and kind of create infrastructure and develop. Um, another factor that contributes to the immigration question is Canada's low birth rate. So we have about 10.3 births per thousand people, which is not a lot. The theory is that new residents are needed in order to meet future government obligations in, in terms of national prosperity, which basically means that um, immigrants are needed in order to help develop the country. So now that we've talked a little bit about the history of Canadian immigration, it's time to talk about Ontario, which is Canada's most diverse province. Ontario has a population of about 13 million people and around half of them are immigrants from over 200 countries speaking about 130 different languages. So you can kind of get a sense of the diversity in Ontario. Ontario is often referred to as the economic engine of Canada and it was built mainly by the hard work of newcomers and immigrants. Ontario has 445 towns and cities. So how on earth does anybody know which place to choose and where they want to live. Well, that's where I'm here to help you. So for help choosing a city or town, you can visit municipal websites, for example, www.toronto.ca. Um, you can also visit major destinations for newcomers, which include the Greater Toronto Area or the GTA, uh, Ottawa, which is the capital of Canada, Hamilton, Windsor, London, and the region around Niagara Falls. 
So all of these destinations in Canada are very popular for newcomers and you can visit them and see if you enjoy the atmosphere and um, I definitely recommend doing so. Uh, you can visit a few city websites and arrange trips there um, to kind of figure out a little bit more as well. In order to figure out what kind of support system the government offers for newcomers, you can check out newcomer settlement and community support programs in those cities and regions in Canada. Um, for example, in Ontario, Service Ontario is an organization that provides information um, on Ontario government services across Ontario. So that's a really good service, but there are specific services for specific destinations. So if you're in the greater Toronto area, you can check out community support programs there for newcomers, and you can figure out um, basically everything you need to know using those community support programs. So. If you need help in your language, the government also offers a lot of services. Um, the government offers interpretation services to help newcomers use government and other community services. So let's say, for example, you've exhausted all possible resources and found a city or town to move to. What do you do now? Now you need to find a place to live, of course. In Ontario, you have the following options. One. You can rent a property, which is where you are the tenant and you pay the property owner, obviously, a rent. Or you can buy property where banks and institutions charge you interest rates and mortgage and loans for buying a house or condo. And then there's something called cooperative housing, where more than one tenant contributes their time to upkeep and maintenance. So it's like um, a bunch of people basically living together and they all contribute towards rent, expenses, maintenance, everything like that. So that's the options that you have in Ontario if you're looking for property. Um, and then the government of Ontario also offers a lot of support for people that are in desperate situations. For example, you can live in a boarding home where it's usually one room and sometimes includes services like meals or laundry, but it's usually temporary and there's usually more than one person living together. If you are in a state of emergency, or if you know anyone in a state of an emergency, a newcomer may temporarily stay at an emergency shelter or hostel where they offer support such as counseling and referrals to legal health and other services for free. So that is in, if you are in a state of emergency. Um, and then also, if you are in a desperate situation, you can apply for subsidized housing which is a government program that basically charges people rent depending on how much money they make. But the only problem with that is that it could take a long time of people being on the list, of course, to actually get subsidized housing. Um, but what you, once you find somewhere to live, it's time to find a school for your children. So um, Ontario's public schools help prepare people. They're some of the best public schools in the entire world. And Ontario's public schools help prepare people for a lifetime of success. Um, they are free and divided into elementary, secondary, and post-secondary schools. And each community in Ontario is publicly funded by a school board. So once you find a school for your children, I recommend going to that school and checking it out and talking to most likely potentially the principal and whoever else, like the staff works that work there, and seeing if it's a good fit. Um, once you find a school for them, it's time to reach out to the rest of the community and take part in community life. And there's no better way to do that than volunteering. Volunteering is a great way for newcomers to gain experience and training and um, get involved in the community while potentially giving back and building their resume to help them find better jobs and stuff. So volunteering is a great way to get started. Um, and there's definitely a lot of volunteer opportunities. You can visit um, newcomer settlement agencies for um, help identifying the volunteer operations. Um, there's a lot, so you can definitely find one. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about getting around in Ontario or transportation. So uh, transportation in Ontario really depends on the city that you live in. There's public transportation in almost every city or town in Ontario and the corresponding transportation service really depends on where you live. For example, in Ontario, public transportation systems often include 
buses, trains, but also some systems include streetcars and subways, such as the TTC, which is Toronto's most popular and most frequently used public transportation system. GO Transit connects different regions in Ontario, with buses and trains that link communities in the GTA, uh, Hamilton area, and other communities to the east, west, and north of Toronto. So if you need to commute around all of Ontario, the GO train is probably your best option, but if you're very local and you need to stay somewhere like in Toronto or another city, I would recommend looking at other public transportation systems that are more local. Um, you can visit city websites and municipal websites in order to figure out exactly what transportation and what like getting around services they have there in that city, or you can simply ask around. Um, but yeah, it's a great way to get around and it's really important to know how to get around. Um, so if public transportation is not your thing, you can also get a valid Ontario driver's license. So if you buy a car, you will need to carry papers that include your vehicle ownership and proof of auto insurance as well as your driver's license with you at all times and you can actually get charged if you do not have these documents with you. So it's very important that you carry these with you at all times. Ontario has different kinds of driver's licenses for motorbikes, cars, commercial vehicles, etc. And we also have licenses that cover everything, like the A to Z license. Um, if you don't have a driver's license, for most people, there's a two-step process to get one in Ontario, and it only takes less than 20 months to get a driver's license in Ontario. So it includes the test includes a vision test, they test your eyesight to make sure that you can see properly. It includes a written test of the rules of the road. <clears throat> and most people do practice tests um, in order to prepare for the written test. So there's apps that you can download and websites that you can visit to practice the road rules for the test. Um, and it's available in several different languages. So you don't have to only do your driver's license in English. It's also available in any language basically that can accommodate you. Um, and there's also two road tests in order to obtain a G license in Ontario. To apply for a driver's license in Ontario, you need to be at least 16 years old. Um, but once you pass the test, you basically get your G1, and then your G2, then your G. And you are um, once you get your G1, you are considered a beginner beginner driver, and you need to like practice driving and gain experience over time um, in order to get your G2 and then your G. If you already have a driver's license from any other country, it's valid for 60 days after you come to Canada, which gives you time to get your Ontario's driver's license. So you need to bring your ID and your driver's license and documents, and you will have to pass a vision test and a written test covering Ontario's traffic rules. But no road test is required. If you already have a driver's license from another country, you don't have to do a driving test, you only have to do the written test. And of, of course you can get you can do that in your own language and there's obviously services to help people pass these tests. Like I said, there's apps and websites. Um, you can search them up and in your municipal using your municipal website like Toronto.ca or NiagaraFalls.ca, there's municipal websites for every region and city in Toronto and you can find information on getting a driver's license there. Um, so now we're going to talk a little bit about finding health services very quickly. Um, if you don't have health coverage in Ontario and you don't have a doctor, it's really important that you find one. If not, if you don't have these, you can register with the Ontario Healthcare Connect service, which basically connects you to healthcare in your area and you can have a you can find a nurse or a doctor or a nurse practitioner, any health service that you need using Ontario's Healthcare Connect service. Every province in Canada has a Healthcare Connect service and you can use these services depending on the province and the city that you live in. They also are very specific. Um, you can use the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario, find a doctor to find a doctor and you can um, choose the advanced search option to find a doctor in the exact city or town that you live in. So that covers all of Ontario. But like I said, there, every province has a Healthcare Connect service, which lets you find a doctor or nurse in your city or town. And the Ontario Health Insurance Plan or OHIP um, pays for many medical services. It takes a while to apply and it might um, take a while to 
obtain these documents, but I definitely recommend doing that almost as soon as possible. Um, so it covers medical services, for example, a lot of, like, Canada has some of the best healthcare in the world, um, and, you know, it's basically because of, like, health insurance plans like OHIP, um, which cover many medical expenses, including regular visits to the family doctor. Um, to receive health care services through OHIP, you must be a resident of Ontario. There's a waiting period of three months to obtain the OHIP um, card and coverage, but your local newcomer settlement agency or your municipal website of whatever city or town that you choose to live in can help you get an OHIP card and pro provide additional information on accessing health care in Ontario. So now we're going to talk a little bit about human rights protection, and then I'm going to wrap up for today. Um, human rights protection is huge in Canada, and it might be... Um, Another reason why uh, Canada is a very popular destination for newcomers. Um, so human rights are rights that are inherent to all human beings. So regardless of r race, sex, nationality, ethnicity, language, religion, or any other status. Human rights include the right to life and liberty and freedom of slavery and torture, freedom of opinion and expression, the right to work and education, and many more. <coughs> So you have the right to be free from discrimination and harassment based on these categories, whether you are in a community or your workplace. You're also entitled to complain to the Human Rights Commission if you feel that you are being discriminated or harassed in any manner. So thank you so much for watching the first session of Newcomer Orientation and Settlement. And I hope to see uh, you next time for the next English session. We have our Spanish session taking place tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Um, if you have any questions, please contact me directly at doha.hanno at parsi.ca. So that's doha.hanno at parsi.ca. I'll leave all of the information in the description of this video. And thank you so much for watching.